Hi everyone. Today I wanted to do a video of how I insert my cup and how I check to see if it's positioned correctly. And I'm going to use the Eva cup by the Anagin Company for this demonstration. And this is a Model 2 or a size 2 or the large size of the two sizes that they do carry. And it's all intact. I didn't uh, cut the, the stem or anything. So this is exactly how it comes. And I also have these little dollar store plants. They come in like an egg and you just add water and they're supposed to grow. Supposed to grow. Um, and uh, the tops of them come like this. And it has three holes on the top. Um, and it's just clear. But on one of them I had cut the holes just so that I could place my finger in it to act as uh, where my cervix would sit so that I could demonstrate um, and explain how um, some of the problems occur when you might be uh, using the cup and it leaking or, or um, how I fix that problem of having my uh, cup sitting positioned um, incorrectly. Um, so. I, I thought that I would use these because when I was trying to test on different uh, shot glasses, a lot of my shot glasses have print on them, and um, also I don't have a wine glass, well I do have a wine glass, or a champagne glass, I'm sorry, um, but when I stick the cup in there, it's too far up um, that I can't really insert my finger to show you how I check for some of the things that I check. So I ended up finding these um, around my house and thought that they would be a better item to use to show you. So first of all, there are so many different folds that you can use to insert your cup. And I'm not going to go over all of those today. I'm just going to go over the two that I normally use. Um, and the first one is a punch down fold. And I usually use this one with um, my larger cups, the large size cups, um, the Model 2s, size 1, uh, size 2s, uh, and usually it has to be a, a little bit more of a firm cup. The soft cups don't, it doesn't seem to work for me because it, they don't pop open um, like I need them to. So the punch down fold is you just place your finger on the rim of the cup and you press down to the center and you can see my finger right there going to the center where the stem is down to the bottom and it just folds up like that. It kind of reminds me of when you hot dog your tongue when you're little. Maybe you still do that. <laughs> and I'll show you all the way around. And so when I do this and I hold it of course, it's going to be turned upside down because I'm putting it, uh, I'm turning it um, downward to place into my body. So, really, it looks like this when I'm inserting um, the cup into me, into my vagina. For my smaller cups, I guess I should have brought a small cup down here, and my very soft cups. Um, I just use the regular U-fold or C-fold, however you look at it, and I just find that it's easier for it to open, and a lot of times, um, because my muscles are, are strong, um, I have to slide a finger up to actually get the cup to open. It just depends on what cup I'm using at that time. Um, the softer ones, just I have a harder time opening them, but with the small um, cups, I'm saying um a lot, I'm so sorry. Uh, with the smaller cups, it's just easier for me to hold it open, or hold it while inserting it um, as a, a U or C fold. So using that punch down, down fold, uh, well, it goes this way, sorry. Your cervix does not sit up and down like, like this. It does uh, sit back. So when you're inserting your cup, you want to aim for your tailbone. It's, so it's going to be at a diagonal. 
and uh, my finger in place of where my cervix would be. Um, you want to insert the cup and let it pop open. Oops, I didn't get the cup all the way in there. This way. So you want to insert your cup and let it pop open. And this is one of the problems uh, that might cause you some leaking. If you can see my finger, uh, if your cervix is hanging outside of your cup like so, you're not going to catch any blood. So you want to wiggle your cup a little bit back to let your cervix get back in there and then push it into place. So your cervix is inside of the cup. So without using the big hole here, um, I would insert my cup and sometimes it would stay folded like that and what I do is pinch the base and it pops right open like that and I'll try to do that again so that you can actually see the rim pop open. So here's my cup, and I'm sorry about the glare, that is the my tablet that I'm filming on. Uh, I had to move away from one of my, or my usual window that I'm sitting in front of uh, because I was catching all of the curtain glare, so I hope you can see still. So here I'm going to pinch the base of it and it pops open, just like that. Sometimes when my cup is uh, bunched up, like that inside uh, after I insert it and pinching doesn't help you need to wiggle your cup down just a bit and it will also open up. So after my cup is inserted I check to see that I have it positioned correctly and I do this because I don't want to have any accidents if I'm at home on the couch in bed at night or out and about in public I, I really really don't want to uh, have that uh oh moment so what I do and it's a habit now even if I know that the cup opened uh, like the lunette I swear I could hear it open I don't know if it's in my head or or if I can actually hear it but I can definitely feel it open because it's such a firm cup that that pop makes a loud sound and I could feel it just pop inside of me so um, even though I know that one opened I still check to make sure that it's around my cervix correctly and there's only been one cup I don't know if I had already gone over this but I there's only one cup that I had problems with not um, going around my cervix right away as uh, but still just for peace of mind I go ahead and um, check so in most of the cup pamphlets or websites they say to spin your cup and either you know you're trying to spin it from the stem because that's the part that is the closest to the opening of the vagina or if you bear down and you grab those grip rings um, you can try there but I've never never had any luck trying to get it to spin that way so what I do is I insert a finger and either I have enough wiggle room to insert the finger all the way up or I have to push my cup in with lunette because it's a a more firm cup I do have to sink that cup in and hopefully you can see right there I am pushing against it and I can feel the rim and it's giving resistance against my finger so I know that that area is open so I found that when I insert the cup to check that the rim was open it also spun my cup so I am doing those two things I am checking that the rim is open on both sides and I am also spinning my cup. Another thing I'm checking for when I'm uh, when I have my finger there and I'm checking that rim and spinning my cup is that my cervix is not hanging outside of my cup. So I have to insert my finger and when I go on one side and feel okay it's open um, 
you know, it spun that way, and, and I have to go back to the start because I can't go all the way around my cup um, like that. I go back to where I started, and I swipe the other side. And in the doing this, I can check to see if my cervix is exposed. And if it is, I know that I need to move my cup just a bit back so my cervix could drop in and then push it back into place. After my cup is inserted and it's positioned correctly, my cervix is where it needs to be and the rim is open and everything is all good on the inside, I bear down as much as I can and I take a wet wipe and I wipe around the grip rings and the stem if the stem is still there. Sometimes I just take a wet wipe and I place it against my body and bear down and I just kind of rub that back and forth and make sure that I, I get the bottom of the cup. If I'm not doing a real thorough job of trying to wipe this, um, this area. And I do this because when I first started using cups, I thought I was leaking. And I, I would, you know, insert my finger and check and make sure that everything was exactly where it needed to be, but I was still um, finding blood on my underwear. And I learned that if I bared down in any way, coughed, sneezed, laughed, um, my cup would just come out just enough to touch my underwear. And every time it did, it would leave blood marks or stamping, I started to call it stamping. My cup was stamping my underwear, leaving blood marks on it, little dots of blood. So I thought I was leaking or spotting. And it was just because there's uh, blood on your vaginal walls that end up coating the outside of your cup. And over time, it'll start to, you know, pool down here at the, the bottom because of gravity, and then it, it, it exits your body. Um, transferring from the cup onto your underwear. So by doing that, wiping the bottom of the cup, I have no problems with any kind of stamping or spotting or thinking that I'm leaking. So after using a cup for some time, you start to get to know the feelings of when you need to empty your cup. And for me, I feel like this uh, bubbling sensation inside of me or a little bit of burping, um, or I don't know, gurgling. And that's when I know my cup is just about halfway full, and that's right around this rim, which is a half an ounce. And that's when I usually change my cup. I've never used my cup to the full capacity, and even on my heavy, heavy days, where I change my cup um, three times in one day, or not change my cup, but empty my cup three times in a day, um, as opposed to two times in a day, uh, that's when I know. And usually it's in the middle of the day. So I, I wake up and I empty my cup, and then around three, anywhere from three to six o'clock, I know I need to pay attention to my body because it's going to start making that sound if I'm trying to prolong it. Usually if I have time, I just go ahead and, and, and dump it and then reinsert it uh, just so that I'm not wondering when that feeling is coming. But And then I, um, I empty it again right before bed while I'm in the shower. So three times as opposed to the two times when I wake up and when I'm in the shower before bed. I hope you can still hear me okay. Um, I think the school is mowing their lawn, so there's there's a bit of a buzz behind me or on the side of me, um, and I hope it's not too loud in this video. So anyhow, when I'm ready to remove my cup, of course I wash my hands, and either I sit on the toilet and lean forward so that I could reach um, the cup better, or I'm in the shower squatting down or with my leg propped up on the edge. So I normally have to bear down to be able to reach my cup. I know a lot of people with a shorter cervix could probably reach their cup quite easy because the cup sits at, uh, closer to the entrance of the vagina. So for me, I have to bear down 
and um, sometimes during my cycle, and it depends on which cup I'm using uh, during that time, uh, my cup rides up really high. And so there are times that I have to give a good three to five bear, um, pushes for the cup to reach the entrance of my vagina that I could reach um, this, either the stem or the little nub of a stem that I leave or the very base of the cup. So if your cup is high and you can't reach it, don't panic. Uh, just keep bearing down and you know take, take a break if you need to, if you're getting frustrated, but just keep trying to bear down and eventually your cup will um, move to the closer to the entrance of the vagina so that you can reach in. So when I can finally reach my cup, I usually can just reach the very tip of it and I pull it down just a bit so that I could reposition my fingers and grab more of the base of the cup where the grip rings are. And at this point, your cup is still suctioned around your cervix. So if you give it a gentle tug, uh, your cup will come out just a little bit more. You might have to wiggle your cup back and forth to get it to come down, but just enough that you can slide a finger inside, move that rim, or collapse that rim a bit to, to release the suction around your cervix. Uh, some people might have some discomfort. You don't want to pull your cup out so much that you're pulling your cervix along with it. Um, it might be painful. I have never gotten to that point. I always, I can always feel when it's just on that line that it, it'll hurt. So, of course, that's when I stop. Um, so I, I get it down just enough to release the section of the rim around my uh, cervix. And I, again, keep sliding my cup out or rocking my cup out. And after using the cup for a while, you'll, you'll know your body a bit better and how to use the cup more. So at, at a certain point, you'll know when this rim is just about to exit your body. And I paid attention to that because that's when your rim um, may hit your urethra. And I have never had... A huge problem with that but I've I have seen other videos and um, discussions about people saying that it hurt a lot so I, w I think because I was prepared for that more that I paid attention to that so uh, again when that rim you can when you can feel that rim just about to exit your body you want to press in the rim a little bit more just to get around your urethra and not have that pain. So when I remove my cup it looks a bit like this. And I am on the toilet or in the shower so I don't I don't worry about it like gushing out or anything. I just empty it right below me. So hopefully I went over um, some issues that you might have had uh, with using a cup or inserting it or removing it um, or maybe some tips and tricks how to figure out uh, if your cup is open or alternatives to actually spinning your cup like they say to do. Um, if you have any additional questions or comments you can leave them below and if you're interested in getting updates from me um, on other cups or reviews, uh, comparisons, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.